Okay, our next speaker is Stanley Chow. He's head of cybersecurity at One Degree. And he will tell us about fussing API to identify broken authorization. Hello, hello, Stanley. Can you share your screen? Yeah, hello, Leo. Can you see my screen now? Not yet. It should be the third button at the bottom to share the screen. How about now? Not yet. It is, is it not responsive or what? Oh, hold on. Let me reshare the screen. Uh, can you see my screen now? Let's see. Not yet. Oh, it seems I have some problem on my Chrome permission. I see. Um, do you have a quick way to fix it? Or, or, or I can also help you to share your slide in the worst case, as I, I, I saw you, you have thought it to be earlier. Yeah, how about I email you an updated uh, slide? Oh, no, no problem, no problem. Yeah, just send the email to you. All right. Sorry, audience. Uh, so sorry for the technical issue. And just wait a second. Yeah, I got your slide. Okay, then I will help share it and you may tell me when to go to the next one. Okay, that's right. Can you see the slide? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, okay. Shall I, shall, uh, shall I start? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Start. So, um, okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Stanley from One Degree. So, uh, One Degree is a Hong Kong uh, insurance tech company. So, uh, we are one of the uh, insurance company that get a virtual insurance license in Hong Kong, and we also uh, provide our cyber insurance a partner with the open API to provide API provider and consumer the uh, cyber insurance service. So uh, today I am going, I'm sorry, Leo, I think, oh yeah, thanks. So today I'm going to share a security topic about the API broken oath. So I will share uh, what is the broken authorization and authentication and also how one degree uh, identify this kind of the uh, vulnerabilities. Next slide, please. Okay, so uh, first of all, let's see some uh, recent incidents about the uh, abusing of the API access control. So the first one is a Singapore-based company, Grape. So Grape, they uh, released an API last year, and the API can allow the Grape Hinge driver to access their data through this API. However, due to lacking the access control, uh, the valid user of the Grape they, can, they are also able to get others, uh, other drivers data through this API. And the other case is uh, in 2018 in US. So the US Postal Service, they launched a new service called uh, Inform Visibility. So this service can uh, let their senders to track the package status. However, again, uh, due to lacking of the access control, uh, the sender, they, uh, the valid sender, they uh, are able to uh, utilize this API and exploit the uh, vulnerability to retrieve others' uh, information, uh, like email address, uh, like uh, phone number, and uh, their home address. 
Next slide, please. Okay, so uh, above two incidents are all about the access control. So in this slide, I would like to share what is the access control. So usually uh, access control can be uh, separate into two parts. The first one is the authentication control and the second one is the authorization control. So for the authentication control, uh, it is a process to verify the identity of your uh, user. So it, the important thing is that uh, we need to validate that if the user is really the, uh, really the one that they assert they are. However, for the authorization control, it is a different concept. So once the user, they get the identity and you know uh, who they are, uh, the next uh, important question is that whether they have the access right to your resource. So uh, uh, to distinguish authentication and authorization is important because uh, some of the developer, they may only implement the authentication control and they think that they already have a full access control of their API. But however, it is not. So for the authentic authentication control, uh, usually there are some protocols like uh, basic OAuth, uh, barrier OAuth, OpenID Connect, and API keys. So this of the protocol can support to uh, an API to uh, provide the authentication control. And also for the authorization control, uh, there are some protocols like uh, OAuth2. The, uh, this is for the uh, delegated a, a delegated authorization solution. And also uh, some of the programmer, they may do the role-based access control or rule-based access control in their API. And as for the uh, API risk, we all know that um, OWASP Foundation, they will uh, release the top 10 security. And in 2019, they uh, released an API security top 10. And among the top 10 security, we can find that uh, access control actually occupied the three of the top 10. So that means that uh, for API, actually the access control is still uh, a problem in common. Next slide, please. So uh, in this slide, I would like to uh, elaborate more on API 5 and API 1. So API 5 means uh, broken functional level authorization control. And API 1 is for a uh, broken object level authorization. So uh, some of the audience, they may be confused about these two because it looks like both uh, API risk is regarding to the authorization. So what's the difference between these two? So uh, here I would like to uh, give you some example. So uh, for example, if you have an API that can uh, create a new member. So that is post members uh, as a, your API endpoint. So uh, for the functional label authorization, it is to ensure that uh, only the body user can access this endpoint or your API to a body way and uh, only uh, submit the body request. So for example, if you have an API that is for the admi administrator task, and you try to hit, uh, hit this, uh, hide this uh, API into the backend, and you think that a uh, user, they may not uh, visible for this API. But however, an attacker, uh, they can still manipulate their request to find out this API. And if you don't have any functional label authorization control, they are able to uh, exploit these vulnerabilities, and then they can uh, request to add an admin account. So this is uh, one of the functional level authorization risk. And the other one is uh, if you have an API that can retrieve the latest news and uh, you also have uh, the same uh, API that can uh, create uh, the news, but because of lacking access control, actually uh, the body user, once they get the, uh, they can access this endpoint and they found out that uh, they are able to do the uh, post action to the same a API. And then they can, uh, again, they can utilize these vulnerabilities to create a request to add a fake news. So this kind of the control, we call it functional label authorization control. So uh, regarding the 
uh, object label authorization control. What is the object label author authorization control? It is uh, about that uh, once you validate, a user can uh, can uh, do some request to your API. The second question uh, you should care about is that whether they have uh, the authorization to do uh, to 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 retrieve or to do some action to your object. So, for example, if uh, you validate a member, uh, your member can get the uh, member data through your API. And uh, the next question is that whether the same value, uh, the, the value user, they are able to retrieve other users' data through the same API. So uh, this kind of the um, uh, this kind of the risk uh, is in common uh, in recent APIs because most of the developer they may think they already implement the authorization control, but actually they only implement the functional label authorization control and lacks of the object label authorization control. Uh, next slide. So uh, right now we can uh, understand uh, what is the authentication control and what is the functional label authorization control and object label authorization control. The next question is how can we identify uh, this kind of the risk uh, uh, exists in our API. So uh, in one degree, one of the uh, testing skill we use is fuzzing. So what is the fuzzing? The fuzzing is a methodology that can send a bunch of the data uh, to the API. And the goal of the fuzzing is try to send this, uh, a, a lot of the uh, data into your API to test if they can break the trust boundary of your API. So when we design an API, uh, every API should have a trust boundary. So for example, if you want to uh, design a API that can let your member get, the, get their data, your trust boundary may be to limit that API to your members only, and every member should only get their data only. And uh, if you have an API that can uh, let you create the administrator permission, you should only allow the uh, admin members that can do this action uh, and uh, request this API. So uh, same as the uh, other uh, API, that uh, all API, they should have a trust boundary. And the fuzzing, the, the, the goal of the fuzzing is try to break it so that you can uh, find out whether there is any unexpected result, and then you can find out whether there is any broken authorization or authentication control. Next one. Okay, and uh, this slide I would like to talk about uh, some fuzzy vector type. So uh, we now know uh, what fuzzing can do and uh, how fuzzing can help us to identify the vulnerability of an API. So how uh, exactly we can utilize the body? So there are two types of the body. The first one we call it a uh, recursive body. So a recursive body is trying to fuzzing a part of the request by iterating uh, a combination of the uh, a character set. So for example, if uh, your API that can allow your members to retrieve their data and uh, we then we found that uh, your API uh, have a, have the same pattern like uh, eight digits from uh, zero to F, so that we can try to pass in this API from eight zero to AF, so that we can test uh, all uh, all the requests uh, to your API and try to find out that uh, if uh, there is any uh, access control vulnerability exists in your API. And the second one, we call it a uh, repressive fuzzing. So for the repressive fuzzing, uh, we try to um, repress the fuzzing value by uh, some uh, string. For example, you may uh, try to repress it by admins so that you can find if there is, uh, if there is any admin endpoints that is uh, hidden in your backend. And you can try to fuzz in uh, some uh, script so that you can uh, find out that if your API has any cross-site scripting vulnerability. And you can try to fuzz in the SQL 
injection, OS injection, or XML injection, so that you can identify if there any injection exists into your API. And you can even pass in a long string or a big number so that you can identify whether there is any uh, buffer overflow or integral overflow. Next one, please. Okay, uh, in this slide, I would like to uh, introduce the fuzzing procedure. So uh, how, uh, how do we start the fuzzing? So the first one is we need to identify the target. So a target might be an API endpoint and might be a group of endpoints or even a domain. So once you identify the target, the next one is that you need to define your test case. So uh, you need to uh, have a methodology to generate your test case. So usually uh, we have uh, two uh, methodology to generate the test case. The first one we call it mutation-based uh, fuzzing. So for the mutation-based fuzzing, you need an initial state first, and then the test case will be generated automatically uh, based on this thing. So usually the mutation-based uh, fuzzing is easy to start. But however, the limitation uh, is that its coverage may be limited. And also uh, the successful rate is very low. And the other kind of the methodology to generate a test case, we call it uh, generation-based uh, fuzzing. So for the generation-based, you need to provide uh, the value that you are going to fuzzing. So usually it relies on the knowledge of your API. So for API fuzzing, we usually uh, will leverage the generation-based fuzzing because uh, nowadays we have uh, open API spec that can help us to understand the API. So for our tester, they actually they can base on the open API spec to understand how to generate their test case to uh, test out uh, whether there is any unexpected result uh, that will be uh, responsible. Uh, by your API. So once we uh, confirm the test case, the next one is that we will leverage some tools to execute the fuzzing. So, uh, and once we execute the fuzzing, the uh, final stage is that we monitor the result. So uh, the, uh, the response of your API might be expected. For example, uh, if we try to fuzzing uh, some uh, unexpected data, then uh, if your endpoint respond uh, 400 series, which is uh, unauthorized uh, from client side, that means that uh, uh, your, uh, M your API already have uh, solid access control. But once if your uh, API responds uh, 200 OK or 500 server error, that means your endpoint might have uh, some access control issue or maybe a server side issue to handle this unexpected result. So usually in this stage, uh, sophisticated uh, tester, they will go back to the test case. They try to uh, refine the test case to uh, improve their successful rate of the party. Next, please. So uh, in this slides, I would like to introduce uh, some open source uh, fuzzing tool. So uh, we, uh, for our tester, they usually uh, utilize a uh, bird suite or Zep. Uh, Zep is um, uh, developed by the uh, OWASP Foundation, and also some uh, open source tools you can find on GitLab or GitHub, so like uh, Soli, uh, Bluebox, API Fuzzer, Rester, or uh, Pizia. So this kind of the tool, it is free and uh, everyone can uh, and can utilize it for the testing. Next one. Okay, now, uh, now we know uh, what is the fuzzing and how fuzzing can help us to identify the uh, vulnerability. And we also know how to uh, process the fuzzing. So uh, in this slide, I would like to uh, introduce you how one degree integrate the fuzzing into our DevOps. And we actually, we call it DevSecOps because uh, in our entire DevOps, we uh, integrate all the security component uh, in our continuous integration and continuous deployment. So uh, usually we will integrate fuzzing in the uh, test phase, uh, 
please click the next slide. Okay. Yeah, and then uh, uh, next slide, please. Yeah. So and and uh, just one click. <laughs> Thank you. So so uh, in one degree, uh, we separate the test into a uh, QA and security. So uh, why we uh, we make it uh, we, we make a different uh, independent team for the testing purpose because uh, the two team aim to different uh, objective. So for the QA team, they usually uh, test the use case and they expect for the expected result. But however, for the security team, they usually will test the misuse case. So which means that they usually don't. Uh, they usually try to find out whether there is any unexpect, unexpected result of your API. Next slide. And, so and quick, quick, quick yeah. reminder for for any. Uh, I oh. think the time is all running out, and you may consider to wrap things up in within say one two minutes. Okay. Got okay. it. Okay. Uh, next slide, please. Okay. So. Uh, oh, is it this one? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so for the uh, security part, we try to uh, do some two things to automate to, uh, to efficiency our security testing. One is the, to uh, we try to automate the fuzzing test so that uh, we can do the test along with the increasing project. And the second one is we try to schedule the test. And uh, the reason that we are not integrated the security test into our uh, CI/CD. It's because we found usually the security test uh, they take too long time, mm -hmm. so uh, we try to use the non peak time for the scan, so that our security tester they can focus on analyzing of the uh, report of the test result. Next one. So uh, the final uh, slide I would like to uh, introduce some uh, machine learning. So we now know fuzzing can help us for security testing. And, uh, but there are still some challenges of fuzzing. Uh, one, one of the challenges is how can we generate the uh, accurate uh, testing vector, uh, which is also known as test case. So uh, machine learning can be leveraged on this part because uh, machine learning can, uh, we can feed the uh, data set into the machine learning and they can try to learn the data set and provide a more accurate uh, uh, test case for us. So uh, we do see that uh, in many uh, research, they um, they provide evidence that uh, with introduced to machine learning into the fuzzing, the uh, actually the um, successful rate can be uh, improved uh, significantly. So um, okay, I think that's all I want to uh, introduce today. Thank mm -hmm. you. Okay, thank you, Stanley. Thank you, Leo. Yep. Okay, and I think the time as the time is uh, running out, so maybe I can leave you now, Sandy. So you can leave the stage now.